Pastor Bonnie Kinnanen, and I serve as Chaplain and Church Relations Director at Osterland Services for Youth. And it's my pleasure and delight to be here with you this morning. I invite you this morning to wonder, as I was reading through the lessons and preparing for this morning's worship, it began to occur to me how, how did God orchestrate all of the details of having Christ come into the world and to do as Christ had done, and all of the pieces and players that God had inspired to do his bidding. So I invite you today to wonder with me as well. Let us stand and confess our sins using the order of confession on page 104. Make that line And we'll use the left hand palm. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we, we confess, confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have, we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have not done. We have, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives all of our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to thee the entire forgiveness of all of your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us sing the opening hymn. The opening hymn today is a Christmas hymn, the first Noel. It's a traditional English carol. It just people started singing it, nobody knew knows who wrote it. We not know who to give credit to this, but this is the first Noel. And the word Noel is a French word from the Latin roots Natalie. First Noel. So this is an English carol, English words, and we're singing what the English have sung for years.
the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious God. Amen. Sing praise, all you shining stars. 
stars. Praise, Praise the Lord of heaven and heaven, and your, and your waters, waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, who commanded, and they were created. We made them steadfast forever and ever, giving them all that shall not pass away. Praise the Lord from the earth. You see monsters in all deeps. Fire and hail, snow and fall, tempestuous winds, doing God's will. Mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, wild beasts and all cattle, creeping things and flying birds. Sovereigns of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the world. Young men and maidens, old and young together. Let them praise the Lord, the name of the Lord, whose name only is exalted, whose splendor is over earth and heaven. The Lord has raised up strength for the people and praise for all faithful servants, the children of Israel, a people who are near the Lord. Hallelujah. The second reading is from Galatians, fourth chapter. When the fullness of time had come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, in order to redeem those who were under the law so that we might receive adoption as children. And because you are children, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a child. And if a child, then also an heir through God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Guest pastor Bonnie Coonan, who is the chaplain at Oshland, is reading the gospel. Our pastor John Pollock is uh, out of town today. Thank you. 
required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth, and the child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. The word of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. This is a Christmas hymn written in 1830 by Christina Georgiana Rossetti. She's a poet. She paints a beautiful picture of words in the bleak with midwinter so we can get an idea of everything that happened at Christmas time. The music is by Gustav Holtz, a German person, but the French lady wrote the poetry in the bleak midwinter. is 
phenomenal. For Isaiah, in Isaiah chapter 7, <coughs> predicted that Christ would be born, that Messiah would be born in this earth. Imagine, 600 years prior to the birth of Jesus, there was a prophet who was professing, who was prophesying that Jesus would be born. If I asked any one of you, could you predict what would happen 500 years from now? Could you be so profound? What would you say? You know, would 500 years ago, Martin Luther, who was, who, five, well, the Reformation was 500 years ago, you know, could Martin Luther predict that there would be St. John's Evangelical Lutheran Church on 27 North Springfield? You know, that was this time span that we are looking at here, that God had placed the words in Isaiah's mouth to tell that the Messiah was to come, and that the Messiah would come into the world, and that he would save all of humanity. In this Christmas season, we hear about Mary and the angel that pronounced to her that she would be with child, and his name would be Emmanuel. And we hear about Joseph's dream that he retained Mary as his wife rather than casting her aside because she was pregnant without the benefit of marriage. As I recall the story of Christ's entrance into the world, I invite you to wonder with me, how does God do it? How does God orchestrate humanity in such a way that we complete God's purposes on earth even though we are imperfect? even though we have free choice, even though we have the ability to say no, as we read the scriptures, it looks like it was a well-rehearsed play, with Isaiah predicting the fact that Christ would come into the world, <coughs> with Elizabeth becoming pregnant with John, with Mary becoming pregnant with Jesus, with Joseph taking her in as his wife, with them going to Bethlehem, with them giving birth to a baby, now, just as a note here, this is completely a sideline from what I'm wanting to tell you, but I have to wonder about God. You know, he predicted all of these things to happen. Isaiah predicted, Mary, Elizabeth, the shepherds, the wise men. And the wise men had a four-month journey from the time they saw the star to get to Bethlehem. It wasn't an easy journey. They were riding on camels. It was not a smooth ride by any shape or means. It was a trip that they could not just pick up things and go. They had to orchestrate and manage that trip as they traveled a thousand miles to Bethlehem. So I noticed how God orchestrated all of these things to be in perfect order. But God forgot one thing. He forgot to make reservations at the end. You know? He got all the other prophecies correct. But he didn't make reservations. I mean, how could he forget that one, one detail? That one detail. You know, when you travel, perhaps that's the first thing you do, is you figure out where you're going to stay. Whether you're going to bunk in with relatives, or whether you're going to stay at the Super 8, or do the other types of motels. But God forgot. Or did he? Perhaps God's purpose was that Jesus would be born in a humble estate, that Jesus would be born in a manger and not have all the fluff that would surround the king. Somehow God orchestrates all of these things. Somehow God makes it all happen in such a way that it looks like it's a perfect play, <coughs> walking through each scene and each piece of the story with precise and perfect Decision. We hear about Mary obeying the laws again, where she and Joseph took Jesus to the temple to present him to be the Holy One, the firstborn male in the family. They also went with Mary as an opportunity to present herself and the purification rituals that were necessary to occur after a woman had given birth. Now, we are told again in a very light-handed way that Mary was a poor woman. For any other woman who had finances behind her, she would have brought a lamb to be sacrificed. But here in the scriptures, we hear about Mary bringing two pigeons to be sacrificed. 
sacrificed. The least expensive sacrifice available. Although I do have this vision of Mary trying to run around to catch pigeons, but I think actually what probably happened was that there were pigeons for sale on the way going into the temple. And so she brought <coughs> two pigeons in for her purification rituals. I'm amazed at how Joseph and Mary continued to follow the laws of the Jewish society in such a way that they would do the normal, ordinary things that any parent would do with their children. Now here's another story interesting that I want to point out is Simeon and Anna. Simeon was not a prophet. He was not a priest in the, in the church. He was a common man who had found favor with God and who had found a religious home within the temple. And God had told him that he would see the Messiah before he left the earth. And on that particular day, he came into the temple. Maybe he came into the temple every day hoping to see the Messiah, hoping that today would be the day. But on this day, it was the day when he saw <coughs> Jesus and Mary and Joseph, and he picked Jesus up and he recited to him some very powerful words. Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared for all peoples, a light for a revelation to the Gentiles and for the glory of the people Israel. What a wonderful acknowledgement for Simeon that he could now leave this earth with his heart at peace. I don't know how many of you have been with people who are in the process of dying, but there's a different sense of peace and calmness with a person who has a faith in God and a trust that how what happens next will be okay, even though they may not know what happens next as they breathe their last, but they trust that God will take care of that detail and there's a peace and a relaxation that God will indeed tend to them as they pass. So Simeon is saying, okay, Lord, now I have seen the fulfillment of your word here in this infant child, Jesus. Now I can pass in peace. There's another section in that verse that kind of pricks my curiosity. It says that this birth, this child is a light for revelation to the Gentiles. Notice the Gentiles come first and who's going to hear about the resurrected son. It is only second that Jesus comes for the glory of his people, Israel. So even from the very beginning of Christ's birth, we are invited to know and to go that Christ is for everyone, not just our small group, but for everyone within society, those that we perceive on the margins, those that we may think might not want to be <coughs> we are invited to spread God's word even to that extent. So Simeon picks up Jesus and he tells Mary and Joseph something very significant. And I would advise you never to tell a young bride and group or a young mother and father this particular text, unless you're inspired to do so by God. So I don't think this was very comforting to Mary. I'll just read it to you again. It says, The child is destined for the falling and rising of many in Israel, to be a sign that he will be opposed, so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed. And then he says a curious statement, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. Don't say that to a bride. Don't say that to a young mother. It will not give encouragement for that, for that mother in life. But Mary had a peek into the history that would lay out before herself and her son that he was indeed responsible for the destiny, for the falling and rising of many in Israel. And that Mary would have her own grief also. Again, I wonder how God orchestrated all these things that Simeon would go to the temple that day, that Jesus was brought that day to be blessed in the temple.
And then we have Anna. Now notice here the age of these people. You know, Elizabeth was an older woman who was beyond the childbearing years and she became pregnant. We have Zachariah who was uh, struck deaf. I mean, no, he couldn't speak. And we have the wise men from afar. We have the shepherds. We have now Simeon and Anna, who is said to be 84 years old. God uses each and every one of those people and situations uniquely to confirm and to affirm the birth of Christ in the world. He uses all of those pieces, and even though each one of those individuals has the ability to make their own choices in the world, they chose to do God's will. They chose to carry forth with that stirring in their belly that they could only do what God had called them to do. I wonder how God does it. You know, to know that God knows humanity well enough, to know that even in the world of free will, that that particular individual, that particular group of guys, that particular woman will follow through obediently to God's will God's command. I wonder. I wonder how God works within us today in this life, in this span of time. I wonder how we are connected into eternity. And I wonder how we will, how the world will be situated 500 years from now. Will there be St. John's Lutheran Church? Will there be Christianity? Will it be outlaw? Will it be a thriving religion well respected by humanity? We don't know any of those answers. But we do know the questions and the desires of our hearts to continue to follow where Christ leads us. To follow one step at a time, not always knowing where the path is leading, but trusting that God has everything under control. There is a word in the Tanzanian language, Swahili, that talks about a light, a light for your path, a light for your feet. And it's a light that doesn't have a far beckoning beam, but it's a light that shows the next step. It shows the next step is going to be okay. And when you take that step, then the light will show the next step in the path. It's not a bright light, but it truly is all we need to follow the path in Christ. We don't need to know the ultimate destination. We just need to know what the next step God is calling us to. How does God work it out? I don't know. So I invite you to continue to wonder with me, how does God work all of this out? How is God using us in the span of eternity and trusting that as Christ came into the world to be a part of humanity, Christ is as well with us in this time, in this span of eternity, encouraging us and comforting us and drawing us into his presence. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, for the reminder of your call to, to serve you, to, obe to obey you, and to do what you would want us to do. Encourage us to be obedient. Encourage us to take the steps that are before us even if they are a bit of a challenge. We give you thanks, Lord, for St. John's Lutheran Church and the ministries that they take part in. We pray for the folks that come to the rainbow table to eat every week. We pray for those who are our recipients of the food pantry. And we pray that you would bless each and every one. And it is in your name that we pray. He is seated at the 
at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Drawn to God as obedient children and heirs of Christ's promise, we pray for all people of God, for our nation, our world, and for all in need. We pray for faith communities, Lord, in the city of Springfield, and for faith communities throughout the world. Help us to see ourselves and our neighbors, especially those who are different from us. Draw us together in common service to those who are hungry, poor, and oppressed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the well-being of the earth as we begin another year entrusted with its care. Give us lively imaginations to see ways to conserve its limited resources. Harness its renewable energies and conform ourselves to the natural goodness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the peace among the nations, for peace in our homes, for peace in our hearts, Urge us to cry out at injustice and inequality among your people until vindication comes and righteousness prevails. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who wait in the shadow of death, for those who are ill, for those who struggle to see the future, and for all who lack even their basic needs. Transform our love toward them with the vision of eyes that have seen the salvation of the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. For those who cannot see, for those who cannot hear, for those who have varied use of their limbs, and for those able to exercise all of their senses, help us to appreciate the fullness of God's gift of life and our varied abil abilities, and to celebrate the diversity that reveals a more complete image of the one who makes us family. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give you thanks, Lord, for those who have gone before us in this year and now rest in you. Led by Mary, Joseph, Anna, and Simeon, let us live in your praise until the day we depart in your peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your outstretched arms, O oh God, we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray, trusting in Jesus Christ, the light and the life of the world. Amen. Let us bring forth the offerings. <laughs> Time for our offerings. This is St. John's Lutheran Church. Today is Sunday, December the 31st, 2017. This is the first Sunday of the Christmas season. We finished the Advent season. See, the ushers are going forward to get the offering plates. And in the background, you see the beautiful poinsettias that are surrounding the altar. You see the angel on the altar, the Christmas tree with all the symbols of Christmas, all the traditions that make us remember Jesus' birth that make us remember our families, to give us the wonderful feeling of love. Jesus Christ came into the world to save us. He is our savior, he is our king, we are thankful for that. This is the first Sunday of Christmas, December the 31st, 2017. We're celebrating the Christmas season. We uh, are very thankful for the flowers on the altar. They're given in uh, because of the kitchen workers here and St. John's Rainbow Table. The beautiful flowers are in honor of those people who work on every Friday and feed those who are hungry, just like Jesus said, I was hungry and you fed me. And you've done it to the least of these, my brethren, you've done it to me. We thank you for watching on YouTube and we hope that you will take Jesus into your heart and give to other people in the community. Do take Jesus into your heart and listen to him, do what he asks you to do, and you will love others just as he has, and he will love you, and it will change your life. We're uh, happy to have a guest pastor, Bonnie uh, <coughs> Kinnunen. Kin 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 Gracious Lord, we thank you for the offerings that you have granted to us. May they be used in service to your kingdom. 
<coughs> Together let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May the God of steadfastness and encouragement grant you to live in harmony with one another in accordance with Christ Jesus. May the God of all hope fill you with joy and peace and believing, so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. And may the God of all grace bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us sing the last hymn. The last hymn is Go Tell It on the Mountain. It's a hymn of slavery. The black workers on the American plantations made these songs to help them get through a terrible experience of slavery. They created a form of American hymnology. These hymns were almost lost, but there were some singers and some uh, music directors at Fisk University in uh, Nashville, Tennessee, who brought these songs to the people of the United States. This hymn, 1907, Go Tell It on the Mountain, was brought by John Wesley Morgan, and they would have been lost if not for the Fisk University professors. on the Christmas tree, different ones of us, put them on and told the story. And this is a tradition at St. John's that has continued. Dolores started it, 
She's deceased, but it has continued. We have a youth event Sunday, January the 7th, 2018. Tubing and lunch at Mad River Mountain, 12.30 p.m. With no, stu no t tubing available, we go to Chuck E. Cheese. But they're hoping to go tubing at Mad River Mountain. So please call the church office if you want to go. We need help from the youth tearing down all the holiday decorations. We hope that you are blessed by this service today as we present Jesus Christ and we receive Jesus Christ and make him Lord of our lives and we spread the message of his love to everyone all around. As Jesus has loved us and we love others, we do as he asks. And as we feed the hungry, we're also looking to the face of Jesus for every person we help. Jesus is there and he is encouraging us to do this. Thank you for watching. Enjoy the beautiful poinsettias, the Christmas the decorations. This is a great time for us as we acknowledge we're very happy that God in the fullness of time brought our Savior Jesus Christ to live as a human being, take on human form, human flesh. And he experiences everything we do and we can look to him to save us. We are thankful that you're participating and ask you to come back anytime. St. John's Lutheran Church, Springfield, Ohio.